Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Welcome to Morning Prayer. My name is Tim Brumfield, Director of Music, Organist, and Choir Master here at St. Gregory's Episcopal Church of downtown Boca Raton, Florida. We are in the season of Pentecost. Once again, welcome to everyone. If you would like to follow along, I'm in the Book of Common Prayer on page 80. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from age to age. The Jubilate. Our psalm appointed for today is Psalm 128. It's found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 783. Happy are they who fear the Lord and who follow in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of your labor. Happiness and prosperity shall be yours. Your wife shall be like a fruitful wine within your house. Your children like olive shoots round about your table. The man who fears the Lord shall thus indeed be blessed. The Lord bless you from Zion, and may you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you live to see your children's children, may peace be upon Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
our first lesson this morning is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans. Chapter 7, verses 13 through 25. Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin, working death in me through what is good, in order that sin might be shown to be sin, and through the commandment might become sinful beyond measure. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. So then it is no longer I that do it, but sin which dwells within me. For I know nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it but sin which dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of the Lord, in my inmost self. But I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin which dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, I of myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of God of sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson is taken from the Gospel according to Matthew. Chapter 21, verses 33 through 46. Jesus said to the chief priest and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a householder who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to tenants, and went into another country. When the season of fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to get his fruit. And the tenants took his servants and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent out servants, more than the first, and they did the same to them. Afterward, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and have his inheritance. And they took him and cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. 
When therefore the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and let out the vineyard to another tenants who will give him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus said to them, Have you ever read in the scriptures? The very stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a nation producing the fruits of it. When the chief priest and the Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he was speaking about them. But when they tried to arrest him, they feared the multitudes because they held him to be a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. O Lord and ruler of the host of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power, but your merciful promise is beyond all measure it surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering, and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O oh Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O oh Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent. And in me, you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages and ages. Amen. We now come to that time of meditating on the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. 
He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Amen. We now come to that time of offering our own prayers of intercessions and thanksgivings. We pray for all those on our prayer list today. We pray for the sick, for those who may be in the hospital, at home. In a nursing home. In a rehab center. We pray for all of those who have lost loved ones. We pray that they will find peace. We pray for the safety of all of our students and teachers and administrators. We pray for an end to racism bigotry, homophobia, hatred in all of its manifestations against our fellow brothers and sisters. We pray that we will be better stewards of your creation and stop climate change.
We lift up all those around the world who do not have enough, enough food, enough access to health care, enough peace, enough love, enough joy. We pray for peace on earth. Pray for all of those who live under the constant threat of war and for victims of war everywhere, especially those in Ukraine. We give thanks for the men and women who serve our country in our armed forces. We pray for our nation and our world and our leaders. May they make decisions out of love for all your people. We pray for this church, for the many ministries of St. Gregory's. We pray for our ministers, Father Sherman and his family, Father Thomas and his family. We pray that Father Sherman will continue to have a safe and restful vacation. We pray that St. Gregory's will continue to be a beacon of light and hope here in South Florida and throughout the world. And now, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. <clears throat> well, once again, welcome to Morning Prayer. My name is Tim Brumfield, Director of Music Ministries, Organist, and Choir Master here at St. Gregory's Episcopal Church of downtown Boca Raton, Florida. I am by myself this morning. Our camera operator and live stream operator, Lewis, was not feeling well and was not able to make it in this morning, so I am operating everything uh, by myself this morning, so forgive any little hiccups that might um, come your way. <laughs> um, so thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to make my way down to the piano, and in the meantime, I'm going to give you something to look at while I make my way down. This beautiful shot of the back window. And now as I make my way downstairs, if you have any requests, feel free to enter them into the comments section. I am excited about this weekend. We have the choir coming back for our 10 o'clock service. They are currently on vacation, but they're coming back for this special one-off service. 
We've had a tritium of special services lately with Juneteenth and then this past Sunday with commemoration of Pride. And this week, we celebrate the birthday of our nation as we celebrate Independence Day. So I'm very excited to welcome the choir back. We will be doing the Wilhowski arrangement of the Battle Hymn of the Republic, which is so stirring and beautiful. We'll be doing some of your favorite hymns as well. The beautiful America, the beautiful, let me turn this mic on. Great. And let me scroll down. Good morning, everybody. How are you? And see, I think I'm on my page this morning. There we are. Hi, Mary Tom, Lucy, Nancy, Dr. Greenley. Hey, Dr. Greenley. Hi, Paul. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Paul. Uh, Thank you for your fine sermon. Uh, yes, I actually preached on this past Sunday um, for Pride. It was so much fun, I really enjoyed it. And um, if you would like to see it, you can always go back and uh, view our service from this past Sunday. Uh, I had a beautiful, a wonderful scola of singers. Michael O'Geeblin was our guest musician playing the violin. And um, I hope you'll go back and, and view that service if you haven't seen it already. Um, as, an, as, as I said, this, this week we commemorate Independence Day and the birth of our nation. Uh, let me see if I can get on to, whoops, how do I do this? I'm trying to see if I can get on to um, uh, St. Gregory's page. Let's see if I can do that. There we are and see who's on this page. Hi, Sharon. Great, I'm not seeing any requests, so I'm gonna do um, something appropriate for uh, this weekend as we head into uh, Independence Day weekend uh, across the nation. And I wish for all of you a wonderful and blessed 4th of July weekend. Stay safe and be careful out there. Make sure you're still wearing your mask. I do when I'm out in public. I still haven't gotten COVID. I'm COVID free, so I'm so happy about that. Everyone around me seems to be getting it. So who knows, maybe I'm one of those uh, crazy immune people. Um, but anyway, I've, I've stayed clear of it. So I hope to uh, stay clear for the duration. Take care, have a wonderful and blessed week and uh, keep everyone in your thoughts and prayers um, this weekend, and uh, everybody stay safe. God bless. I'll close this out with a final blessing.
Thank you so much for being with me this morning. Once again, I apologize if there were any uh, hiccups along the way. Uh, I'm uh, by myself this morning, so as I read the scriptures and fool with the cameras and, and try to make it all happen. So uh, thank you so much for being with me. I'll see you again next week for morning prayer on Tuesday. I'm gonna close this out now with um, a beautiful prayer for our national life, for our country. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech, ye, beseech thee that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of thy favor and glad to do thy will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people, the multitudes brought hither out of many kindreds and tongues. Endue with the spirit of wisdom those to whom in thy name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to thy law, we may show forth thy praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in thee to fail. All which we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.